Okay, we're still talking about weak verbs. In this video, about verbs that begin with the guttural ein, pay ein verbs. Ein being the first root letter. We are on page uh, 153 through 155 or 6 here in the textbook in chapter 16. And uh, I'll just walk through like, some of the paradigms. Is that this section could be extremely overwhelming because she gives you uh, paradigms for um, uh, one pay ein verb in every single stem for perfect, imperfect, imperative, infinitive construct, infinitive absolute, and participles. Uh, so it might be overwhelming to you visually as you look at the textbook. So I'll try and walk you through a few things and identify a couple of things that you might want to pay attention to as you're looking uh, through the chapter. Um, okay, so you'll remember a pay ein starts with a guttural, and because of the presence of the guttural, the vocal pattern, the, the dominant or the regular vocal pattern, will be adjusted or, or shifted or changed in some way. And those changes happen consistently for every verb that begins with an ayin, okay? And uh, the pattern changes, really, uh, because of three things. The ayin requires the pattern to change because of three things, or, or it changes in three ways. First, gutturals only follow certain vowels. And this has to do with the mechanics of speech itself. Ains prefer to follow the vowel, uh, a, an A-class vowel, either a patach or most generally, a, 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 excuse me, either a kamitz or most generally a patach. They'll also follow um, uh, some other vowels, but usually they prefer to follow the, uh, the patach. So you'll find that in, uh, in the... the paradigms here on page 154 and 155, a lot of the ains are following patachs, uh, which changes the pattern because only one verb stem has a prefix patach. And it's in the prefix uh, or with a, a nifal or a hefil that adds a, a letter on the beginning of the word in the, in the perfect uh, it's, it's in those forms where the ayin as a first root letter would follow a vowel. Of course, in, in many, in the pa'al perfect, in the pl perfect, uh, the pu'al perfect, uh, they're not following, the first root letter doesn't follow a vowel. So it just can have whatever, whatever vowel that follows it. Uh, so the mechanics of speech dictate that the vocal pattern change. And one of the ways that it changes is that in, instead of taking a true shiva, because gutturals don't like to take true shivas, and in many of the prefix forms, there is a shiva under the first root letter. But because an ayin can't take a, sh a true shiva, or generally won't take a true shiva, it'll take what's called a compound shiva. And uh, the, the, so a compound shiva is uh, a vowel with a shiva. So here's our ayin. A patach shiva, this is a compound patach. Um, if there's a prefix in front of this letter, and this letter, the ayin takes the patach shiva vowel, what that's going to do is it's going to move the patach into the first position. So often with gutturals, with ayins in particular, if you have a, a, a compound shiva instead of the true shiva, the whatever vowel is a part of that, it's going to you'll see in the in the paradigms that it's either a patach or a segol. That will become 
the vowel under the prefix or under the, the verb stem sign, like in the nephal, for instance, in the nephal perfect. And so, uh, so that's the, the second thing, uh, way that gutturals, the presence of gutturals changes the, the vocal pattern. And finally, uh, in the, for instance, in the nephal prefix, you'll recall, actually just look at your textbook, it's at the bottom of page 154, I'm sorry, the top of page 154, on the left hand side you see number two, rejection of the doggish forte in the imperfect nephal. If you have an imperfect nephal, generally the noon, that is the sign of the nephal, will get assimilated into the first root letter. You can see that with the first example, ye kateo there, the kof has a doggish forte, and the kof is the first root letter. That's what generally happens in the nephal prefix. But on the other side, you have their uh, example verb, amad. Here in the nephal prefix, ayin can't take a doggish forte. So what happens is that the previous vowel is lengthened. It's called com compensatory lengthening, which we've talked about before. And so uh, the ayin rejects the doggish, and the hirik, which is the usual vowel in a nephal imperfect, is extended or lengthened to a tsere, ye amed. Ye I made instead of ye katel. Okay, so let me walk through these um, paradigms with you and just point out a couple of things. So look on page 154. This is the perfect forms. Look at the nephal and the hephiel columns. And you'll notice what I was just describing here with this composite shiva. You'll notice that throughout. So here in the nephal uh, perfect, in the very first example, the third masculine singular, there's no composite shiva under the ayin. However, the first, the, the prefix vowel is still a segual. But um, in many of the others, so for instance, second masculine singular, second feminine singular, first common singular, and then the second and first plurals, it all has that composite schwa with a segol, but all the way consistently throughout in every single form under the noon, which is the stem sign, it's not a prefix, it's a stem sign, under that noon you have a segol consistently, okay, and that's that's going to be the case for all nephal perfects. Again, with the hephiel, hephiel, right, because of the name, generally you'd think it's going to have a heric after the hay. But because of the, of the presence of the, of the ayin, and it doesn't want to follow the e sound, because e, the e sound you make right at the, on the back side of the front of your teeth, e, that's where the sound is focused, the ayin is way in the back of the throat. So it much prefers to follow an ah, or if it can't follow an ah, it'll follow an eh, eh, which is, excuse me, more like the back of the mouth rather than being in the throat, but much better than the front of the mouth. And so here we have, a, excuse me, a segol instead of a hirik under the hay. And that's consistent all the way down. You also have it with the hofal. It's the, the comets hatuf under the hay, and then, and then the comets shiva all the way down. But you're, you're just not going to run into many hofals. Um, okay, let's look at the imperfect now, top of page 155. You see the same thing. The, the pattern you expect to see in the imperfect is yik tol, right? A hirik followed by a shiva closing the syllable, and then a holem between the second and third root letter. That's for the pa'al. So if you look here at the pa'al or kal, instead of this... Because the ayin can't take a true shiva, it takes the patach shiva, which then replaces the hirik with a patach. So you've got ya'amod, ya'amod, instead of yi'mod. Try, I mean, I don't even know how you, yi'mod, this is hard to say. So this, this change in the vowel actually makes the word pronounceable. 
which which illustrates how languages are are primarily and in the first place oral realities and the 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 grammar and the rules and patterns and all those things that we develop or identify simply reflect what is uh, uh, necessary um, to pronounce the word. So in this case, we can say, you know, the, the com composite shva patach, which then gets borrowed and made the same here under the prefix. Well, really, I mean, that's just a, a, a convoluted and somewhat confusing way of saying the ayin really needs to follow the patach. And so it follows the patach and then it carries there as well. Um, so that's, you see that all the way down in the Kal. Um, one thing to keep in mind from uh, last semester when you memorized all of the vocal patterns for perfect and imperfect, in the he feel, imperfect, a he feel prefix, one of the main signs was the patach under the prefix. Well, here with a Pay ein, you get patach under the prefix as well. But you'll notice there's a holum between the second and third root letters, which is kal, through and through. And in the hefil, you still have the hiric yod between the second and third root letters. So look look at the hefil uh, imperfect column. The only difference between the two forms is the hiric yod and the holum. Uh, but that's a big difference. That's a very big difference. You can hear it and you can plainly see it, the difference. Um, so look, you can look through those. A lot of the other forms are, are actually not quite, uh, not really affected by the uh, presence of the ayin. Uh, a couple of the, the later forms, like the imperative forms, um, are somewhat affected. If you see the hifil imperative, uh, kind of the middle of page 155 to the far right, you still see that uh, the presence of the, the uh, patach under the hay and the patach shiva under the ayin. That's typical. Um, so, so that's pe ayin. 